Hey guys, Steve here. Today we got a game in the Jambard for you. We got a little bit different approach. We're gonna see the opening section. I'm only alive for about eight minutes or so in this game, and then we're going to jump ahead to the final three or four minutes and discuss the ending. Because a lot of players out there, you know, they got baseline skill, but they don't really understand the scoring and or how to win. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that here. Jambard in the middle. Usually I'd prefer this one on the wing, but. There's only so much you can do. I usually try and pull off a little bit to one side. In this case, you see we got that big island to the left of us. That's gonna We're going to move up towards there, and that's going to protect us from shots coming from the left side, and then we can focus on the center and the ships moving into sea. Now, their roster, they have Atlanta, Baltimore, Indianapolis, and we got two destroyers per side. Why am I pointing out those cruisers? They all have radars. And one of our main jobs, especially as a battleship, is to focus on killing the radar cruisers. This game basically is, the idea of the strategy is the destroyers on your team should be the ones scoring the points in domination mode. Uh, that means getting on the bases, capturing them, and then they need to be working on countering the enemy destroyers. So their value is very important to your team. Uh, keeping your own destroyers alive is as important as killing the enemy destroyers. That's basically the gist of the game. If you consistently kill the enemy destroyers and protect your own, then your win rate's going to go up. You're going to win a lot more games. Uh, and what you need to understand about those radars is they're either going to keep your destroyers away from the base if the destroyers are playing well because they're not going to want to go within that ship's radar range, usually about nine kilometers, a little bit more in some cases. Uh, but if they're not aware of the radar cruisers or they're not paying attention or whatever, they get spotted by them and the enemy team shoots your destroyers while they're kind of permanently lit for 20 seconds or so, then you're going to lose your destroyers. And once again, we need to be focusing on keeping them alive. So we're moving into this position here. You can see now those ships to the south uh, east of us are now blocked by that island's position. So now we're kind of free to engage uh, these ships over here. Leon was the first one we attempted to shoot at. He missed there. Uh, Atlanta squirts free here. Forecast is going to call for golden showers as long as that thing's alive. We don't like that. We don't like to get splashed in the eye with that sticky stuff. So we're going to try and put some shots into him. He's backing up and depending on his position he might even be able to fire over that island on us. So we're going to hope that our team uh, gets into position there. And we got a nice juicy broadside Iowa. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a shot at him. He slams on the brakes, which is, uh, we're still going to land some of these shots, but they're going to be in front of the Citadel, so whether or not we would have uh, hit them with bigger damage or not, who knows, but it was a good uh, dodge there. And now, we we got the uh, reload coming up here, we're going to take one more shot, and then we're going to notice right behind them, what's that cruiser, oh, it's going to be a Baltimore, as we're going to check here in a second. Don't get anything too juicy on the Iowa, just a little bit of chip damage there. But Baltimore, same idea. They're all kind of coming over here broadside. And this is, you can see on the map, we're pretty centrally located. And once again, we're protected from that eastern flank. So this is a pretty strong position. Do have to be worried about destroyers when we get, kind of get in a forward position like this. Shots away in the Baltimore. He takes a shot from our team. And then down he goes for a he gone. So we got rid of one of the three radar cruisers pretty much right off the bat. Good target selection by whoever on our team was shooting at him. And uh, we, of course, chimed in and helped take him out as well. Still looking for those shots on the Atlanta, but we can't hit him. So we're going to go ahead and load in on the Iowa. And now he's uh, the Atlanta's electing to shoot at us, which is always going to be a source of consternation and distress. But there's not a lot we can really do. We can try and back up here a little bit, get out of his range. Uh, usually those light cruisers, the really floaty, slow-traveling shots, they're going to have a harder time at range, so you can always try and back up away from them. He's squirting back, though, because he had some torpedoes uh, coming his way. Of course, we're going to target him whenever we get a shot at him. Knock out one of his guns temporarily and do a little bit more damage. I was beginning to angle away now, so that's going to be a lot less profitable. doesn't even look like he's going to be in our firing range. Now, unfortunately, you can see here, they have three battleships concentrated on their home cap. or One of them's moved forward, it looks like, now on the map. And now they have a destroyer in A. We are, of course, taking note of that. And the destroyer could be two feet away from us. You can see he's already trying to torp the battleship behind us. While we're still alive, definitely want to get this Atlanta down. He slams on the brakes there, does a good job dodging. So we're just able to get him with a little bit more chip damage here. Uh, I 
I misspoke earlier. I thought it was the third battleship, but it was actually the third cruiser that moved uh, northward on that eastern side of the map. That's the Indianapolis. So at this point in time, I'm thinking, okay, our team's heavily concentrated on sea once this Atlanta's down, as there he goes right there. Now they're going to begin capturing the base since he was actually preventing the capture, uh, keeping it in a contested state. And now I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're in a bit of a pickle. I'm like, okay, if I can get rid of that Indianapolis, then I think I'm, I think losing the ship would be worth it. I don't think that's a very good uh, thought process. I was just kind of really gung ho on <laughs> getting all these radars off there, because uh, once the ship count begins to reduce and the destroyers are alive then those radar cruisers values goes up even more because if you can keep them alive in the late game that can cause serious problems when capturing the bases and controlling them it's kind of a, even more of an elevated importance so in these tight games like this i'm thinking okay we got to do this uh, we should be expecting torps coming from the left and of course they are going to be coming in any moment i'm just trying to get into a position here and there we uh, spot the torps i'm trying to get in a position where you get that indianapolis but this is a good positioning for this red destroyer. Inadvertent or not, it doesn't matter. He's creating crossfires between him and these battleships to the south. Like the battleships, you want to spread out, get some distance between you and the other battleships as a battleship player. Therefore, you can create these crossfires, i.e. shots into the side. Same thing with the destroyers. Because those torps come in there, I had to turn. And now I have to immediately turn back here uh, to engage these guys. And you can see they took advantage and got some shots into the side. So... Likewise, you know, your positioning with a destroyer compared to your battleships of the utmost importance. So now the destroyer pops up on the map there. I actually missed that uh, when I was playing, unfortunately. So we did take a shot at the Vanguard. That wasn't as valuable as shooting that Akatsuki. But we were able to get him with a little bit of damage there and more torpedo salvos. And once again, these are going to force us to turn. And once again, that's going to allow these guys to have broadside. So as a destroyer player... Rather than sitting among your team, launching torpedoes from the same direction, which are a lot easier to dodge, since they're probably going to be angling towards those ships anyway, try and create these positions where you're kind of at a 90 degree angle, and you can see how effective of a position that was. So I wanted to point that out, that's one of the reasons I chose this game. Uh, but then we're going to jump into the analysis of how to win this. Here's the Helena up north, here's the Indianapolis we were talking about earlier, he's pushing forward. Helena's actually going to win this fight. And uh, that's going to remove all those radar cruisers. So we're going to have a destroyer. We're going to jump through towards the end of the match. It's going to be 2v2. They're going to have two battleships. We're going to have a battleship and a destroyer. Now when we jump into this point, uh, I was a little bit aggravated watching this because you can see they have two caps now. And we're going to jump forward, I don't know, three, four minutes. And they're still going to have two caps. Look at where the, the destroyer is right now. He's going southward trying to torpedo battleships. Typical Japanese battleship play, or sorry, destroyer play in general. And uh, it's, all destroyers tend to do that a lot, but it's particularly problematic for the Japanese destroyers. So you can see they're up about 235 points, give or take. And here's something I just wanted to point out here. Uh, getting on this cap by this destroyer would stop the accrual of points. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, he doesn't want them to know he's there. He's trying to get these torpedoes off. Um no, you don't have the luxury to do that at this point in time in the game. We need to stop those points from running up. Okay, and now he shoots his guns anyway, so that nullifies that argument in case uh, you're wondering. And I'm not trying to pick on these two players. Uh, in particular, these are very common mistakes, and, you know, we just need to talk about them. So getting on that cap would prevent that uh, extra three or four points every five seconds. It's four points in this case, so it's... Even more important on those maps that have four points per uh, tick. But he actually got him with the Torp, so good play there. Now all they got to do is be on this cap, flip that cap, and they'd have a better chance. Uh, but the longer you're down here, the more that those points continue to come away. Now you're kind of in a position where you have to kill this guy. But look at this situation. The battleships are closing in. Massachusetts has plenty of health. And it's. I thought, okay, these guys... They clutched it. You know, all the guy has to do is ram, right? Because we have two ships. The battleships can kill each other, and Blue would win in this instance. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know if the Massachusetts was attempting to do that, and the red ship kind of juked him, or if the Massachusetts didn't just understand, what do we need to do to win here? We have to kill the ships. We can't get the score high enough 
at this point in time just because our team has been ignoring the caps for too long. You always want to be focusing on the caps early in the game so that you have multiple options to win. The longer the score runs up in the enemy's favor, the less options you have. You basically have to kill them. And here, see, I don't I don't think the Massachusetts was going for the Ram because he looked to me like he was pulling off there. So kind of a mental error there. And, uh, you know, he's going to go down. So you got to... This game is a lot about uh, game awareness, map awareness, all sorts of awareness, situational awareness. And that, of course, comes with experience. You guys get additional experience by watching replays from myself and whoever else, um, and then from playing the game. So these are these are easy situations to fix. I mean, you can't ignore the cap. You can't launch torpedoes and then sit two feet from the cap. That really bothers me when the destroyers are basically, they can spit into the cap. <laughs> And, uh, you know, choose not to get in on. And then, of course, the Ram there. We unfortunately missed that. And now uh, the Asashio, once again, is going to feel like he's going to have to gun this guy down. Uh, torpedoes, you always have to remember. I mean, my torpedo launch stats, I don't know what it is. Roughly about 10% hit rate. So if that's your play, if that's your game plan, I'm going to count on torping this guy. And you got a 10% chance to do it. That's a very low percentage chance. To, uh, that play's not reliable, in other words. So you want to go for stronger plays, and that means capping bases. So rather than sailing around torping battleships, missing salvo after salvo, finally hitting one, you know, get on the cap. Focus on the reliable points. So those are easy lessons uh, to take away from this one in terms of end game, how to finish it out. But I thought there was interesting stuff, primarily, number one, focusing on the radar cruisers uh, as a battleship player and the good crossfire creations by those destroyer players a lot of good takeaways from this match so anyway hopefully you guys did enjoy that one if you did please hit the thumbs up new to the channel consider subscribing lots of world of warships coming all the time questions comments leave them below love to hear from me and we'll see y'all later peace